Hi, my name is Randy Shear, and I'm a technical curriculum developer here at Jitterbit. And I'm glad you could join me as I walk through the setup process for the Workday Salesforce Opportunity to Contract Process Template. First, I want to explain what a process template is. The Cloud Studio process templates are groups of pre-built integration use cases that accelerate the execution of a specific business process using numerous objects across multiple applications or systems. Process templates are designed to reduce the time to deployment by 50 to 80% and can be self-implemented, delivered by Jitter Professional Services, or delivered by implementation partner. For access to a template, contact your customer success manager. The Workday Salesforce Opportunity to Contract Process Template connect data and processes between applications right out of the box, significantly reducing integration efforts. Synchronized fields such as account, customer, contact, opportunity, and contract items between systems automatically create a contract once an opportunity closes. Connect your CRM and ERP systems quickly and easily with reusable integrations that speed implementation and streamline business processes. With all that out of the way, I'm going to quickly show you how to set it up. To install the process template, I'll need to log into the Jitterbit Harmony portal and open Marketplace. Marketplace is Jitterbit's new resource for searching and retrieving recipes and process templates to help you quickly create new projects. I will use the filter on the side to help me remove any unwanted templates. Once I find the appropriate template, I will first click on Documents to download the documentation guide for this process template. This documentation guide should be referenced frequently while using this process template. After the documentation guide finishes downloading, I'll click Start Project. I will be directed to the Download Customization screen. This is where I can download the additional files to prepare my Salesforce instance. Once the files finish downloading, I will click Next where I'll find the Create New Project screen. I can modify the name and select my proper environment because Jitterbit is capable of having multiple environments. Once all these steps are complete, I'll click Create Projects. After the projects are created, I can either go back to Marketplace or go to Cloud Studio. I will continue to Cloud Studio where I will find my newly created projects. You will need to prepare your Workday instance. Please see the documentation guide for information about the Workday instance preparation. This is out of the scope of this video. Now it's time to prepare my Salesforce instance. I will locate the Salesforce zip package provided by the process template. This package is located in the Salesforce package folder. To deploy this package, I will use the Salesforce Workbench. Workbench is a web-based tool designed for administrators and developers to interact with Salesforce. I will log into Workbench by going to this web address. I will verify the environment and API version and then accept the terms of service and click Login with Salesforce. After inputting my Salesforce credentials, I am now looking at the landing page of Workbench. Along the top, I will hover over Migration and click Deploy from the drop-down menu. I will click Choose File and browse and select the Salesforce custom field zip file located in the Salesforce package folder and then click Choose. This will take me back to the Deploy screen. Now that I chose my file, I'll click Next. After the zip file has finished loading, I'll click Deploy. I will do these same steps for the other zip files. Next, I need to verify the deployment of the Salesforce custom field packages and define the custom field security and accessibility. To do this, I'll need to log into Salesforce. For this example, I'll use the Salesforce Classic UI. Look over to the left under Build expand the customize section and then I will expand the object to which I want to verify my custom fields have been added. For this example I'll check the custom fields for the contact object so I will expand contacts and select fields. On the fields screen I'll verify that the custom fields have been added. 
Then I'll click the link that is the fields label to access the custom fields definition details. Now I'll click set field level security to define the appropriate field level security visibility settings. In this case, I want all selected as visible and click save. Then I'll return to the previous screen and click on view fields accessibility to set the accessibility for the particular field. From the drop down, I'll select the same custom fields from the earlier step. On the appropriate profiles, I'll click the link in the fields access column to modify the configuration for the authenticated website profile. On the access settings screen for the field under the page layout section, I'll make sure there is a check mark in the visible checkbox and click save to confirm the settings. I'll be returned to the previous screen. Repeat the process for each field included as a part of the Salesforce custom field package. Now that all that is done, I'll click on the first project mentioned in the documentation guide. Each project has its own independent set of project variables. To set the values of these variables, I will go to the project variable list by clicking the actions menu icon, which are the three dots at the top of the project pane. I will then select project variables from the drop down menu. Then set or modify the values as appropriate. When I am done entering all the appropriate values, I will click the X at the top, which will take me back to the project. There is a list of variables that need to be changed in the supporting documentation guide. I will apply the appropriate variable settings for my connectors and I'll be ready to test each endpoint connector. With the appropriate variable settings applied, I clicked the X at the top, which took me back to the project. Prior to running any of the project's operations, I need to open each of the configured connections, both Salesforce and Workday, and test the connection to confirm that the supplied credentials work with each endpoint. First, I will check Salesforce to see if the connection is successful. To do this, I'll double click on the Salesforce connector and scroll down to the bottom where I see the button called test. When that button is clicked, it will take all the variable settings I used in the last step to see if there is a successful connection to my specific Salesforce connector. If it was successful, I'll see a green message saying connection success. If it was not successful, I'll get an error message. I see that my connector was set up correctly and I will click the X at the top and do the same thing for the Workday connector. Now it's time to start triggering the proper workflows in the proper order. It is important that I install, configure, and test the connectors of all the projects listed in the documentation guide. Once this step has been completed, I can deploy and run each project in the proper order as listed in the documentation guide. If you have any questions, please check out the information located at Success Central by going to success.jitterbit.com.